keep an eye on things today and not mess anything up. But we're going to start with some straightforward questions and moving. Yeah, that's right, Maria. And we're going to, um, uh, you know, move into some questions that are more complex. But here we are. We're starting with question 20.30 today. And the very first question, we want to convert an ester. So we have an ester and we want to convert it into an acid chloride. OK, and there's no way to do this directly. There is no reaction that we have learned to do this directly. And I'm going to go through some of these retrosyntheses a little bit fast because we've already covered all the chemistry here. But we know that in terms of retrosynthesis, if we could make. If we could make a carboxylic acid derivative, then all we would have to do is treat that with thionyl chloride and that would produce the desired product, the acid chloride. And so now we've shortened the problem to how do we get from here to here? How do we get from this ester to this carboxylic acid? And of course, the answer is hydrolysis. And we learned two ways to hydrolyze an ester. We said you could just hydrolyze it in acid. So that just requires aqueous acid and heat. And that will give you the carboxylic acid. So there you go. Or we learned saponification. Or, and the way we do that is to treat it with sodium hydroxide. You don't have to put heat. I usually do because I would heat that reaction up. And then in the second step, we acidify with H3O plus. And there you go. So you can do the hydrolysis in acid. That's the reaction that I wrote first. And then the hydrolysis in base. Remember that has a tatsy name. It's called saponification. But either way, we convert an ester into a carboxylic acid. And then to convert the carboxylic acid into the acid chloride, we use SOCl2, and remember that is thionyl, thionyl chloride. And that's a mechanism that's covered in our textbook, but I told you, you don't have to know that mechanism. So there you go, 20.30A. Let's move on to 20.30B. So I'll just scribble it down here. And in this one, we're starting out with a carboxylic acid. So this is cyclohexane carboxamide, or sorry, cyclohexane carboxylic acid. And then we're going to convert that into a primary amine. And we haven't covered the nomenclature of amines yet, but again, I'm gonna use some retrosynthesis to solve this problem because I know that if I had the amide, right? I know that if I had a primary amide, this compound right here, all I would have to do is reduce that with lithium aluminum hydride, and that would give me uh, the desired primary amine. So again, now we shorten the question to how do we get from the carboxylic acid to the primary amide? Could anybody suggest a first step that I might wanna take? There's no way to do it directly. I can't go directly from a carboxylic acid to a, um, a carboxamide. Could anybody suggest a first step though? I think that, well, we're gonna use that, Nicole, aren't we, right? Eventually we're gonna use um, excess uh, ammonia, aren't we, to make a primary amide? But in order to do that, we first have to make the acid chloride. Exactly. So first, we'll make the acid chloride. So we'll take this. We'll make the acid chloride. It's not a very pretty structure, but anyhow, there we go. And then we're going to treat that with, like Nicole said, excess ammonia, and that is going to make the primary amide. And then in the last two steps. We're going to treat it with LAH. And then remember, in step two, you don't treat it with H3O+. Plus. That would be a no-no, right? Because that would make the ammonium ion. So you just want to treat it with water. With water, and there you go. And there's the entire synthesis. So remember, in order to go from a carboxylic acid to an amide, you have to pass through an acid chloride. And you're going to see that a lot, that we're going to pass through acid chlorides in these um, in this chapter many many times we're going to do that all right and the reason why is because acid chlorides are just so reactive let's try c so again this is 20.30 and this is question c this one looks kind of straightforward and it kind of is in a way we're taking acetic anhydride and we just want to convert that to acetyl chloride so again just a little review here this is acetic anhydride it's a it's a reactant in its own right and then we get acetyl or acetyl whatever however you want to pronounce it chloride acetyl chloride so how are we going to do this well we saw last class that we can take 
acetic anhydride, it was one of the reactions in the review where all we have to do is treat that with aqueous acid, even just water, really. And that's going to hydrolyze the whole dang thing to acetic acid, right? It's just going to blow it all apart to acetic acid. And if you're wondering, well, if I start with one mole of this, is that going to give me two moles of acetic acid? The answer is yes, absolutely. You would end up with two moles. But that's neither here nor there. It's not really pertinent. Well, I guess it is pertinent in a way, but it's not really what they're quizzing us on. Uh, but we do know the last reaction to go from a carboxylic, carboxylic acid excuse me, to an acid chloride, we treat that with thionyl chloride, and that gives us our acid chloride. All right. I'm going to ask you guys to help me solve the next one. So if you can either type it in the chat or unmute your mic, I want you to help me solve this problem where we take an ethyl ester. So here's an ethyl ester, and we want to convert that to a primary, a primary amine. Primary amine. Now, based on what we've learned so far, the only way to make a primary amine is, again, going to be from a primary amide that we reduce, and we've gone over that reaction already today. And so my question to you is, could anybody tell me, what would the, what's the first step you would take to get from the ester to the amide. I'm open to suggestions and it gives me a chance to drink some coffee. It can't be thionyl chloride, right? It can't be SOCl2 because SOCl2 is only going to react with a carboxylic acid. Okay? Yes. So a few of my students put a hydrolysis in acid. I would do that. That sounds good. So let's scribble that down. If we hydrolyze the ester, in aqueous acid, so H3O plus, and heat that up. That's going to give us the carboxylic acid. Now, I left out in the last problem that you're also going to get the alcohol, so you'd also end up with ethanol coming from this part of the molecule. The reason why I left that out is because it's not really part of the problem, but you can put it in there if you want. You can leave it out if you want, like I said. Okay, so now we're getting closer. If we want to get to that primary amide, First, we're going to have to use thionyl chloride, and that's going to make the acid chloride. Then we're going to treat it with excess ammonia, and that will give us our primary amide. So we'll scribble in that primary amide, comme ça, as we say in French. Right, Audrey? And then we're just going to reduce this, okay? So first step is going to be lithium aluminum hydride, and second step is going to be water. So somebody asked a question. It was ethanol instead of... Um, ethanol instead of thionyl chloride. So, um, no, so all I was saying is that when you hydrolyze the ester, so if you take this ester, okay, so we'll copy this and I'm going to paste it down here. So I'll change the color to red. Okay, so what happens is that when you hydrolyze an ester in aqueous acid, okay, let me draw this bond out more explicitly. Right, there's a bond between the oxygen and the ethyl group. And what happens in the, in the hydrolysis reaction is that you break this bond, the bond that I have highlighted in blue here. And so you end up with the carboxylic acid on the left-hand side, if you will. And then you're also going to end up with the alcohol right, that comes from this portion of the molecule here. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. It's not my prettiest artwork, is it? Here we go. The iPad is a very unforgiving tool when it comes to penmanship. And God was also very unforgiving when he, when he gave me my powers of penmanship, which are pretty lacking. Anyhow, so let's go on to question. So this is 20.30, just kind of practicing along here. This is E. These are, you know, great problems to, to work on. The evening, you sit down on the sofa, get a notepad and some paper. And here in this one, we want to make a nitrile, right? We want to make um, this nitrile. But the thing is, is, is that, you know, when I see a nitrile, the first thing I think of is cyanide. And then I'll just do an SN2, but that's not what you're doing here, right? Not at all, because you're not changing the carbon skeleton. Here you have seven carbons, and here you have seven carbons. So there's no substitution reaction happening. Could anybody help me out with this one? Uh, in terms of a retrosynthesis, there's a key, there's a very much a key reaction. 
that we have to know here. How do I make a nitrile if I'm not doing it by substitution? Does anybody remember? We covered this reaction towards the end of the lecture. OK, so this one's a bit of a tricky one if you don't remember it, OK? It's you actually make it from a primary amide, OK? If you have a primary amide, you can convert that directly into a nitrile using thionyl chloride. So thionyl chloride has multiple uses. But now we've simple, simplified, excuse me, the problem. And now the question is just how do we get from the carboxylic acid to the primary amide? And we've already covered this. Again, first step is going to be SOCl2. That makes the acid chloride. All right, then, like Nicole had said earlier, we treat it with excess ammonia, and that makes the primary amide. And then there is a mechanism for this reaction in the book. I don't ask my students to know this mechanism, but we treat it with thionyl chloride, and you convert the primary amide to um, a nitrile. So I'm going to put a blue box around this one, maybe just to kind of help remind you that you got to know this reaction. It's one of those things that just, not the mechanism, okay, you don't have to know the mechanism, but this reaction does show up time and time again in the course, all right? It shows up, you know, you'll be walking down the street one day and then you just get surprised by this reaction, so. Anyhow, let's move on to question 20.32. There's some challenging problems in 20.32. So this is question 20.32. And we're going to start it with A. So we're starting it with benzoic acid as our starting material. And we're going to make a change to that functional group. We're going to, going to convert that carboxylic acid into a secondary alcohol. OK, so we're going to have this here. And this. Okay, so this is going to involve some chemistry we haven't even looked at yet. All right. But um, just to kind of put the bug in your ear, okay, you might be thinking, well, if I'm adding two carbons, right, I'm starting out with seven carbons and I'm ending up with eight carbons, sorry, nine carbons. Nine carbons. You might be thinking, well, uh, you know, I could use a green yard or something like that. The problem is. If um, you were to make an ester here, if you treated this with thionyl chloride, or if you did a, a Fischer esterification or something, you know, then the green yard is gonna add twice. And so what you need to do is make, is make an acid chloride. If you could make the acid chloride, kind of giving the whole thing away now, but if you could make an acid chloride, all you'd have to do is treat this with ethyl um, cuprate. That's all you'd have to use. Remember we called this a Gilman reagent? So Gilman, I'm not sure if I spelled Gilman correct, but it's a Gilman reagent is what that is. And that adds once to the um, acid chloride. So now the question becomes, well, how do we get to the acid chloride? We already know how to do that. We've done it many, many times. And so this reaction scheme actually isn't nearly as complex as it might look. First, we take benzoic acid, we treat it with thionyl chloride, and that makes benzoyl chloride. So that's the name of this compound. This is benzoyl chloride. And then we treat that with the Gilman reagent. So that's this here. Okay. And that gives us the secondary alcohol. So again, I would put this in a box and say, you know, this is another one of those reactions you need to know is how to use a Gilman reagent. All right. Let's move on to one that's a little even trickier, I would say. This is 20.32B, 20.32, and this is B. This one's got some, a really interesting connection in it. So here, we're starting with uh, bromobenzene, which looks like a pretty boring compound to start out with. But then we're making this really neat ester here. And we might do a couple of, a couple of disconnections to get this thing right here. So we're making this compound here. Could anybody type in the chat? Does anybody remember what we call this group here? What do we call that group that's in the blue oval? It's called blue oval group. All right, it's, it is an acyl group. That's right. You're right. But could you be even more specific than an acyl group? You can go one deeper. 
it's a so it's like a no, it's not a ketone right because it's an ester no so remember last class i said if you have this okay we call this an acyl group but if the r group is a methyl group specifically okay we call that an acetyl group all right so this is an acetyl group acetyl all right and if you remember last class when we talked about retrosynthesis or how what you how you would put an acetyl group on a compound we said if you have a primary alcohol remember we looked at the synthesis of aspirin and tylenol we said if you had the primary alcohol all you had to do is to treat that with acetic anhydride right if you remember we used acetic anhydride to do an acetylation reaction or or you could use the acid chloride and pyridine Either one is going to work. The acid chloride and pyridine will give you an even better yield. And what that does is it simplifies the synthesis greatly. Now it's, you know, how are we going to get from here to here? How do we make um, this primary alcohol? Well, we could make this compound from a Grignard, right? If I took bromobenzene and I treat it with magnesium and diethyl ether, let's just draw out the phenyl magnesium bromide. So I have phenyl. Anion magnesium bromide, like that. Now, this is a really powerful nucleophile. So, could anybody tell me what a good electrophile would be to add one carbon and one oxygen? Could anybody name the compound that you would need to go from here to that alcohol? What would the electrophile be that I would treat it with? It would be a carbonyl, so let's think about it. It would be a carbonyl compound, right, that's got two hydrogens attached to it. So it would be this compound. It would be formaldehyde, the simplest possible aldehyde on the planet Earth, right? So we do that in step one, and then we would acidify in the second step, and that would give us this compound, which is called benzyl, benzyl alcohol. And now to get from here to here to the final product, I could either treat it with acetic anhydride or I could treat it with acetyl chloride that we looked at earlier and pyridine. Let's draw out the ring just for fun. Okay, so there we go. There's a synthesis of that compound. And so you've got to know how to do an acetylation. And again, you could have used or we could have put or acetic anhydride and then we could put here C, um, Tylenol and aspirin. Come on, Mr. Dion, aspirin synthesis, synthesis, like that. All righty. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me on that one. Everybody see that one now? Is it easy? No. Is it doable? Sure. Yeah, it's not easy. Let's try another one then that's kind of tricky. And I don't mean it's a trick question. I just mean it's not a... It's definitely something you have to think about a little, a little bit. So this is 20.32. This is question C. So here we're starting it with benzonitrile. This compound, benzonitrile. We want to make this thing over here. So we're going to try another acetylation here. Put that kind of bug in our ear. So now we've got a tertiary. Oops, I'm not even drawing the compound. I'm doing a retrosynthesis already. So. We have a tertiary, oh, there we go. So we have this ester, but right, what do we call this group again? Anybody remember what we call this guy? It's not Gary. That's right, it's an acetyl. So acetyl, Y-L. Okay, and so we looked at the addition of an acetyl group, and so we know that if we had this tertiary alcohol, right? All we would have to do is treat it with acetyl chloride. Okay, remember acetyl, okay? So acetyl is this, okay? I see a bunch of people wrote acetal. An acetal is a functional group, okay? An acetal is this. It's two very, very different things, okay? Acetyl and acetal, very different, all right? 
So let's go back to it here. So we've got to add an acetyl group. And so if we could make this tertiary alcohol that I have in blue, all we'd have to do is treat it with acetyl chloride and purity. And so now the question becomes, well, how do we get from benzonitrile to here? All right. And we know that we can add two equivalents of methyl magnesium bromide to the acid chloride if we had the acid chloride, right? We could just, um, so if I do another retrosynthetic step, if we had the acid chloride like this, right? We could add uh, methyl magnesium bromide two times, right? It's gonna add two times to give us this tertiary alcohol. So now we've simplified it even more. How do we get from here to here? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hydrolyze that nitrile with aqueous acid and heat and that is going to give us the carboxylic acid. This is one of the reactions that we looked at last class. And we said the formation of the ammonium ion, or the ammonia, yeah, the ammonium ion was the driving force in the reaction. And so now we can kind of see the whole thing, right? We're going to treat this with thionyl chloride, and that's going to make the acid chloride like this. So we have the acid chloride. Then to convert that into the tertiary alcohol, we're going to treat that with Step one, we're going to treat it with excess methyl magnesium bromide, methyl magnesium bromide, right? So that's going to make this compound after we treat it with aqueous acid, so aqueous acid. And then to put the acetyl group on, in the end, we're going to use acetyl chloride and pyridine, and we're done. That's the whole thing. But that's, I would say that this, you know, this um, synthesis is one where it proves that you really need to know your reactions very, very well in order to, um, you know, to get these questions right. Let's try another one. Or we need another green yard. I'm kind of giving the, giving the whole thing away here. So this is question 20.32. Um, this is, no, this is question 20.51. It's another question I wanted to look at with you. So question 20.51, um, and this is A. So we're starting out with cyclohexyl bromide. Bromocyclohexane, they both mean the same thing. They're both perfectly acceptable names, and we want to make an ester. So, you want to make an ester. Yeah. So, anyhow, we want to make this ester, and we know that we could make the ester from the carboxylic acid, and the carboxylic acids show up a lot in this course. So, how would we go from the alkyl bromide to the carboxylic acid? Can anybody help me out with that? I, I bet somebody knows. It's a reaction we looked at a while ago. Yes, thanks, Nicole. Absolutely, it's gonna be a green yard, isn't it? So Nicole, I have a follow-up question for you. So the first step is gonna be um, magnesium and diethyl ether. Now that makes my green yard reagent. What's my electrophile gonna be, Nicole, or anybody? I don't wanna put you on the spot, Nicole. Anybody, what would be my electrophile if I want to add one carbon and two oxygens? Not, how do I make a carboxylate? How do I make that? What's the electrophile I put in? CO2, exactly. I put in carbon dioxide, right? And when you add carbon dioxide, that would make, that would make the carboxylate, right? You'd have the carboxylate like this, but we don't want the carboxylate. We want the carboxylic acid. And so in the third step, we acidify with aqueous acid, that gives us the carboxylic acid. Now, the last step is gonna be the formation of an ester from a carboxylic acid. This is probably the most important reaction in all of organic chemistry. I'm kidding, but I think it's one of the big ones, right? So if we're adding an ethyl group, right? This group here, that's an ethyl. So what are we gonna use? We're gonna use ethanol. We're gonna use a catalytic amount of acid. And we're gonna lose water and remember this is fisher esterification esterification one of the most important reactions you'll ever learn in organic chemistry so we used a green yard to make the carboxylic acid and then we used fisher esterification to produce the ester all right let's try a couple more and then we'll have to move on to chapter 21 so this is 20.51b Let's take a look here. We're starting out with a primary alcohol. So we're starting out with this alcohol. 
and we want to make what do we want to make we want to make this uh, ketone i'm sure a lot of you or most uh, i'm sure everybody could do this problem kind of in their sleep but uh, that's neither here nor there so we want to add just one ethyl group right and so if we had oops i'm deleting stuff here so if we had um let's say we had the aldehyde right if we had the aldehyde we could add you know once to that aldehyde to put in the ethyl group and then we could just oxidize it with pcc right so we do one more retrosynthetic step here and said we could make this from the aldehyde and just do green yard so the question becomes well how do we oxidize the primary alcohol to an aldehyde well, we got a whole bunch of ways, but my students like PCC a lot, so I'll use that. That gives us cyclohexane carbaldehyde. Then we're going to treat that with um, ethyl magnesium bromide. And in step two, we're going to acidify the aqueous acid. That's going to give us the secondary alcohol. And then we can oxidize that with pretty much anything we want. Um, we could oxidize this with, I don't know, let's just pick Desmart and Perionidine. Did anybody do this problem a different way? Did anybody try this problem and solve it a little bit different way? Because I there is another way you could do this. I'll scribble it down here. I'll just copy this. Literally, instead of using the copy tool. And the text is different. Okay. Well, let me show you how I would do another way you could do this same problem. That's you know, it doesn't matter. Do you mean the text is different or the solutions manual is different? Because textbook, whatever. Let's just try and focus on the problem. Does anybody know another way we could do this problem? There is another way we could do this. If we had the acid chloride, we could use a, a cuprate. If we had the acid chloride, we could do a cuprate. Like we could, you know, if we had this, right, then we could just add once. We could add ethyl cuprate once and we'd be done. So I would say that this would be, you know, just as proficient of a synthesis. So we would start by oxidizing the heck out of this with sodium dichromate, right, sulfuric acid and water. And that will give us the carboxylic acid. Like this, All right? And then we get the acid chloride. We treat it with thionyl chloride. It gives us the acid chloride, comes ça, as we say in French. And then in the last step, we would use a cuprate. So we would just use um, ethyl cuprate. So ethyl cuprate, and we're done, just like that. Do 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 do. do. I want to try. Let's try another one. Want to try one more? Anybody want to try a couple more? Okay, since my numbers seem to be off a little bit, let's try this one. Here's a, here's a doozy for you. What if we wanted to do this? This would require the retrosynthesis. If you wanted to take bromocyclohexane and convert it into an amide that looks like this. So if we want to make an amide that looks like this. Um, there's a few ways you could do this, but probably the first thing you're noticing is the acetyl group, right? So your first step in your retrosynthesis would be, well, if I could make the secondary amine, right, then I could just treat it with acetic anhydride or with acetyl chloride and purity, and that would work. And so then it's like, well, how do we get here? Um, So I guess we could make this compound from the amide, right? If we had this amide, right? Then we could just do a reduction with LAH and then it's, well, how do we make this? And hopefully it's becoming more abundantly clear now. You would make this, right? This is a secondary amide. You would make that from the acid chloride, right? So you'd make it from this acid chloride and then you would use um, this compound, which is, well, eh, which is methylamine, okay, so I'll just put here CH3, like that, you just use excess methylamine and that would make that compound. So then if you're wondering, well, how do I get from here to here? Well, you need to add one carbon. So you would just do the green yard, 
I think you would start with one magnesium and diethyl ether. That makes the green yard reagent. Two, you treat it with CO2 as an electrophile. Three, you treat it with aqueous acid. And that gives you cyclohexane carboxylic acid. And then if we want to convert that to the acid chloride, we use SOCl2. That makes the acid chloride. I should have left myself a little more space here. But we can just kind of scribble all the steps down in here. So the number one is going to be excess um, uh, methyl amine, right, to make the uh, to make the amide. And then the next step is going to be lithium aluminum hydride. And then in the last step, we're going to treat it with. Oh, did I miss a step here? I missed a part, didn't I? Let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. You know, I'm going to delete all this here because I missed a part. I, I missed the acetylation, didn't I? So let me just scroll down here and I'll put the acetyl group. All right, the acetyl group, we can add that last, really. That can be the very last thing that we put on. So let me just select all this stuff again and I'll try to explain what I mean because since I forgot to put the acetyl group. So well, let's keep going. So we're going to convert this into the acid chloride using SOCl2. And that makes the acid chloride like this. Then we're going to treat that with excess methylamine. And that's going to make the secondary amide like this. So it makes this compound. Then we're going to treat this with lithium aluminum hydride in the first step. And then in the second step, we'll treat it with water. And that's going to make the amine. So it makes this amine. And then to acetylate it, we're just going to treat it with acetyl chloride and pyridine. There we go. So I kind of left out that step there. I was getting overly excited. And I don't even know if you can see this whole synthesis. I'll try to squeeze it on the page here. So it's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps. Right, a total of eight steps in this synthesis. And I tacked the acetyl group on at the very end. So if this isn't a proof that you need to know your reactions very well, I don't know what is. And so if we go back into our textbook, so if I go here, my iPad, so let's see here, this is chapter 20. And we go all the way down to the end like this. Do, 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 do. Go all the way down to the end and we look at all the reactions that we needed. Okay, we need to have all of these reactions um, pretty much off by heart. Okay, so we went over all of these reactions and there's not much else I can tell you except, you know, practice, practice, practice. Practice all the synthesis problems so that you're sure that you have these uh, questions or all of these reactions down pat. And of course, in our textbook, he goes over some transformations too that might be helpful for you. So the green yard that we just looked at, the Gilman reagents are on here. Then he talks about how to use an epoxide if you wanted to, to do that. And so we've covered these questions, we covered these questions. And then the spectroscopy of carboxylic acids. I'm not going to ask you, I don't think, anything unless it's something like pretty basic. So I'll leave this uh, for you to cover on your own time. I'm pretty sure you all know how to recognize a carboxylic acid in the uh, IR. And then you know that the carbonyl signal can shift depending on whether it's a carboxylic acid derivative or whatnot. So there's nothing really new I can tell you about that. And that covers all of chapter... Zvonzig or chapter 20.